What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangilli here with his first impressions of Marvel's Avengers. Now, Marvel Avengers is a lot of things. For some people, it's more than they expected. For some, it's a little bit less. And for others, it's kind of buggy. But ultimately, this game is going to be around for a while, so I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what it is, what it isn't, and whether or not it's probably right for you. Starting off, we have the elephant in the room, uh, is it buggy? Yes. For a triple A title made by competent game developer Square Enix, there are maybe a handful of bugs that probably shouldn't exist in this game. Uh, I don't believe these to be long-term bugs. I don't believe it overall completely destroys the ability to play the game, but it is a little jarring. So for anyone on the fence about whether or not they should get it now, uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail about why that's not super relevant and it's not important to get it the day it comes out, but I wouldn't say you have to wait too long before a majority of the problematic bugs in the game, like any audio issues or or graphical issues or maybe some server type issues, uh, get repaired. So while yes, there are bugs in the game right now, uh, and it shouldn't be because this is a known developer, uh, I don't believe that they're going to persist for too long. I don't think that by this time next month, a majority of the game-breaking bugs that exist both on PC and on console uh, will continue to exist. I think they'll be patched out relatively quickly because there's a lot of money and teamwork behind this kind of thing as opposed to some of the smaller games where some bugs just persist for a long time. Now that that's out of the way, we will talk about what it is. Now, some people kind of were looking at gameplay trailers or war tables or streams and getting an idea of the type of game it is. Some people are like, it's kind of like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, where you know you put together your team and you run through a mission and, and the storyline will progress you. C kind of. Uh, some others were like, oh, I look forward to playing Spider-Man 4 or uh, like a God of War RPG style uh, Avengers game. And those people were kind of let down. Uh, what, in actuality, Marvel Avengers is a five to seven hour single player campaign with a roughly infinite hour multiplayer uh, end game, for lack of a better word. Uh, think of it more like your Warframe or your uh, Destiny, original Destiny kind of builds where you have enough different characters currently in the game to kind of figure out which one fits your play style and how you'd like to play. Some characters are incredibly strong at one thing, some characters are incredibly strong at another, some are te absolutely terrible at, at doing solo content, some are literally great at any aspect of the game. And we'll go into that in uh, future videos to kind of talk about where the characters show up. But ultimately this game is not uh, God of War, it's not Ghost of Tsushima, it's not Spider-Man PS4. It's not a game where you will download, install, and get as much of an enriching single player experience. It's a de game designed to play online, multiplayer, with friends or without, in order to do what we call the looter shooter effect. Now a looter shooter is a kind of game where, if you don't know, you run in, you kill a bunch of things, you pick up a bunch of loot, you repeat the process ad nauseum, because there's always better loot. And if you're done with one character and they have all of the best possible things they could possibly have on them, you move on to the next one. And in that, it's got that ARPG aspect of a game like maybe Diablo or uh, Path of Exile, where you're never quite done with a character. There's, once you finish, we use hypothetically Iron Man, and you're like, I have a perfect Iron Man build where I could shoot rockets at everybody forever. You're done with your build of Iron Man, but you wouldn't necessarily then move to uh, another character and just never use him again, you might say, what if I tried a new build or an exciting thing? Or maybe I can build Iron Man in a way where he works better with a team. Or maybe I can build him better so that he's one-shotting bosses or as new dungeons and raids and that kind of stuff comes out in the game. There's going to be a lot of customization options for characters. So that's the kind of game it is. It is a multiplayer experience that you can get value out of single player for most of the content if you're willing to just play through different characters and kind of figure it out. If you are the kind of player who's going to go into the game and say, I love Hulk, Hulk is the best, he's my favorite character, I want him strong, well, 
you'll be okay. You'll, you won't have a terrible time with it. But Hulk, you know, maybe one of those characters that doesn't excel at solo play. So you might not get the exact experience. You have to play the characters within the realm of the game, not the characters you necessarily wish they would. On the other side, it's what this game isn't. That's another really important thing to kind of take into account. This game is not complete. You know, this game is, you gotta look at it like you look at games like Warframe or Destiny. We are now in the first week of this gameplay. You have six characters. Some people are completely maxed out uh, on everything. All the characters are maxed out. They have all the best possible gear. They're, they're only playing the game to farm better gear. Some people are kind of tired already of the game. Uh, this game is not supposed to be your main game uh, at the point of launch. Like you, you can't necessarily say, I'm going to play this game and only this game forever. You, you could, but the, the content is very shallow. So if you're not the kind of player who enjoys the repetitive, grindy nature of games like this, you're not going to have the experience that uh, you might want out of something like a normal 60 or more 80 hour game like Spider-Man PS4, Ghost of Tsushima, something like that. Now that we've moved past all of, of the what it is, if you're still watching and you're like, no, I'm interested or I have it, tell me more about the game. Well, I can't go into too much detail now. I'm trying to make this video relatively quick and I will go into more detail on more videos going on characters and how to start. But overall, the, the idea of the game and what you're going to want to play is you can choose whether you want to continue through the campaign early to get a little bit of understanding of all of the characters that you have or you can skip that completely and go straight into the multiplayer aspect where you have kind of control over your own destiny and move into you know, getting better gear immediately and, and finding stronger pieces and leveling up so you can have all your skills. The skill trees are kind of, they're simple after you get the hang of it. The first time you see one, you might get a little confused. Uh, I would recommend anyone who's playing this game, you know, don't rush to the finish line on this game. One, because there's no prize at the end of it right now. You're just kind of going to be waiting for the next big piece of content to come out. It is very uh, loose. It's probably, if I had to guess, uh, about a hundred hours of gameplay. Uh, not even efficient gameplay, but just actual gameplay. Before you have all of your characters at about level 50. Uh, and, you know, you have... A handful of characters at max power power being the relative piece of information now in most games you have what's the level of the character think of something like world of warcraft where you know as you're leveling up world of warcraft you, you gain a level it gives you a skill point it makes you a little bit stronger you might be able to do something you couldn't do before which is inherently kind of true here but this entire game is based more along the lines of destiny's uh, power line whatever your actual power is on your character which is a accumulation of the gear that they have on them that represents the kind of content they can do currently the level cap is 150 as all gear cannot drop higher than 130 you can rank up all of the best gear 10 times making it 140 and then you get one legendary artifact piece or major artifact piece that you can use to uh, scale up the last 10. So a character at a power level of 150 is fundamentally complete. Uh, at that point, you can kind of decide if you want to maybe find some slightly better gear or whatnot. So the experience you want to take as you play through the game is probably more of a getting used to the play style of a character. Now, obviously, I'm going to do some builds and have some discussion about it, but ultimately, what I've found, especially as I've played characters, both based on what some people have recommended and my general play of myself, I've noticed that my particular play style doesn't necessarily mesh with the way a specific character is played. Using just as a perfect example, Captain America is one of the best melee damage dealers in the game. Uh, he can probably solo any fight or content that you put him in. But the downside of Captain America, whether it be intentional or not, is he is absolutely slow and Traverse is so important for these kind of games. He's the slowest character. He has no necessarily like, speed up way to run through a mission. 
So unless the mission is kind of small and short contained, it's going to take you way longer on Captain America than any other character to get to the objectives and complete them. Uh, and if you've ever played Warframe, uh, you kind of get the understanding that like, no, 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 gotta go fast go. So there are some characters inherently like Thor and Iron Man who are amazingly quick and will run through a mission and can completely absolutely crush objectives and the final fight. Those are characters you might want to lean towards for solo content in hard difficulty stuff going forward. And then you have characters that are medium speed, your your Kamala Khan and your Hulk and a little bit of your Black Widow. And they are not necessarily the best for clearing, but they are one of the best members to have in addition to, like on a multiplayer team, uh, because you can, like, you don't have to worry about handling 100% of the responsibilities, and if it's a mission where you just have to reach points, the faster people will go ahead and knock that out for you. Uh, Cap just doesn't have that. At the same time, Cap is, like I said, one of the best melee characters in the game, so you have to see where the balances are and what you're trying to do. Uh, before you decide that it's right or wrong to make those decisions. But that's pretty much it for the first impressions of this game. Please, if you're interested in seeing more, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a couple of tips and tricks for starting. Some like little cheats, I want to say, about uh, how to make sure that you're getting the maximum value on your gear once you've understood how the character plays or how you like to play the character. Uh, and then we'll do individual character discussions as I personally get them up to max level because right now I don't have as many as I'd like. I only have about two or three characters at 130 plus. Uh, I'd like to get them all before I start discussing what I think is a good or bad decision on them. Uh, but I am also, like I said, taking my time to try to understand the character a little more than just say, this is how you can run through solo missions. The characters are more than just one thing in this game. They are solo missions. They are quite a bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate this. Hopefully you guys are interested in seeing the rest of this content, but comment below and let me know if you have the game and if you're interested in seeing what I have to say, or more importantly, if there's something you want to know, because I will go out of my way to find that out because I really enjoy this game. And for those of you who are loyal to me and have been watching me for a long time, you know it's a rare case for me to find a game that I can dive into this deeply and not have that much uh, negative I guess to say about it there are negative things but I don't think that the negatives overwhelm the positives so look forward to some of the next videos and I look forward to seeing you guys feedback so have a good night have a great day I've been Tony Scangeli and I'll catch you later